Hello guys, welcome to our channel once again. So today we are going to talk about a new feature which has been recently added to Azure Data Factory, which is a script task. So there are not much of our documentation available, but whatever I could got, uh, I have actually listed out here. So if you look at the, their uh, documentation, it says that it is available actually mostly for those sources which are kind of a RDBMS or the SQL. So it has listed down saying that Azure SQL database, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure SQL Server, if, even if it's on-premise server it's using self-hosted IR, you can use that. You can use it Oracle as well as Snowflake. So these are the five, uh, I would say, the data sources which are right now supported. So apart from that, this script task cannot be used for any of your lake or any other purposes. So we'll go and see how this can be used. So what are the uh, use cases where it will be useful? So the documentation says that suppose you want to truncate a table or view in preparation for inserting new data. If you just as a preparation, though I know uh, you also know that if you're doing a copy activity as a pre-script also, you can do this kind of task, but this is just one of the use cases. And it also supports your uh, DDL operation. You can create, alter or drop your database objects like tables or view those things. You can do it. You can recreate your fact and dimension table before loading data into them. So it also truly boils down to creating your objects or you can save the row set return from a query as an activity so this is nothing but what you do from the lookup this is very much similar to lookup but we'll see what are the differences because we already have two different uh, activities which does a similar kind of task like you can execute store procedure you also have a lookup now there is a comparison sheet so what it says when you're using script activity when you're using lookup activity and when you are using proc activity so first one says supported data sources so script task is as i said it is mostly supported only by the databases either sql family snowflake or oracle now we all know that lookup activities are supported by all data sources so here this is like one level down from the lookup activity this proc activity of course we know it is supported only for sql then comes what are the operations so what are the operations you can do so you can do read and modify both in script activity lookup activity you know that you can only select records you can only read it as proc activity of course you can do both you can do read as well as modify right uh, then it comes multiple query support so script activity there is a very good support for running multiple uh, queries which you cannot do in lookup uh, of course, you can do in store proc because within the store procedure, you can write multiple statements. That's why it says yes for us proc activity. Yeah. Going to next one, it says query parameter support. So in script activity, we can give the parameter either input or output. While in lookup, you cannot pro provide the parameters. Uh, though there, there are uh, workarounds, you can create a dynamic uh, queries, but direct pa parameter support is not there. In a store procedure also, only the input uh, parameter support is there. There is no output support. So if you have a procedure which actually returns an output and you want to reuse that for some reason, uh, this activity will be useful. Then you have output result set support. So script task, as we said, it actually support multiple uh, reads. So you can create multiple select operations and it can return multiple set. Lookup activity, uh, you can only get the uh, result set from one query. This proc activity, you can get uh, an output. Output query log. So uh, if you are doing some print operations for your debugging purpose, script activity actually allows that. While lookup and this proc activity does not. Uh, integrated CI CD, yes, the script task it is supported because whatever query you are writing in your ADF that would actually go through your uh, uh, JSON. Uh, ARM template JSON. That's why it is supported. Lookup activity, of course, it is. And proc activity, it says no because uh, you have to create your pro store procedure outside. You, your ADF does not actually have a definition for a store procedure. That's why it says no. So before we jump on to the demo, uh, so let's see what are things we are going to cover today. So we will cover uh, executing a single query or the multiple queries in a script task because it supports, supports multiple queries. We will try to pass parameter and see how it works. Then we will see the logging support. I uh, will also execute a store procedure uh, without, param without parameter and without parameter also. And then we will see how you can consume the output of your script task just like your lookup activity. right? Uh, even though we know that it can pr produce multiple uh, results set but how to consume that we'll see that also so let's quickly jump on to our uh, demo 
So I'm here in my ADF, so I'll create an empty pipeline and let's see where you can find the script task that would be under general. So I go here, I just pull out one script task and let's see what all things are here. Settings you go, now you can directly select a link service here. You are not being asked to select a data set. You can notice this, this is a direct link service. So I already have one link service for Azure and yeah before doing this i would show this if you go to new you can see only these supported uh, link services are shown you are not seeing any data like gen 2 or anything else so these are the only thing which are supported okay so whatever is supported you will see only this so i am actually working with azure sql database here now here you have two options either script query and non query so query if you look at this it says database statement that returns one or more result set so wherever you have to return a returns a result set like select queries you should use query and whenever you are doing um, operations like uh, update insert delete or create tables for those things you will use non query So though I have already created my tables, but just for your uh, uh, information, what I'll do is first I'll create a table from here itself. I say create table, say M2, I'll just give ID end. Okay. So we are just trying to create a table here. Let's see if it is able to successfully create or not. Yeah, it is succeeded. So this was our query which we ran. Now I'll go here to my database. I'll refresh. Yeah, you can see M2. So I already had M and M1. M2 is just now we created. So if you rerun this, you, it will fail because the table is already created, right? So now let's try to query it. Now I am actually selecting a query and we will say select star from my table which I already have him. This time we will run without any parameter. Let's see how it goes. Pretty quick. Okay. Now you can see uh, I have only one record in my table uh, with two columns ID and name it has written. Now let us see how we can pass a parameter. I will say where ID is equal to I want to pass a parameter dynamically. I will go here. So this is something new which you don't have in your uh, lookup. To select type I will say select 16. My ID value is 2. Here I have to provide a direction. Okay. So now I am expecting this value should get replaced at runtime. Yeah. Yeah. You can see ID two has been filtered already. Now let us see how this multi query support works. What we can do is I have tried both ways. We can create two queries here itself or here you can add a new plus icon is there. You can say now I want to query another table. Okay. And this time I am querying a different table. Okay. I'll add a parameter again. It's the same parameter, integer, give same value and say input. Now let's see how the result comes out. Let's see the output. Now you can see this result set count 2. It means we have two different result set. The first result set is this where you have a row count 1 with value id 2 and name Ashok. Then there is another row set which has come from my other table. Again here the row count is 1 but the values are different. right? You can see this. Now one more thing I just tried is what happens if you have selected 
rows with the different schema. Now in this one, I don't want to select ID and name both. I want to select only name. Right? Let's see how it works. Yeah, this time you see the first one has ID and name and the second one has only name. So this is pretty useful. So earlier it was like if you had suppose select uh, you had to select multiple lookups right from different table you had to create that many lookups now within a single script task you can achieve that you which you, from whichever table you want to get the data and use it in your other activities you get it from one go. So this is about your selecting and using the parameters. Now, uh, one more thing we'll see here. So it also has a support for logging. I don't know how much useful it would be, but if you go to advanced tag, here you say enable logging. If you check this, you get two options. One is either you log it to a storage account, external location, or you say activity output. Now I'm selecting activity output and what I'll do is I'll put a print statement here. I'll say successful. Okay. And we'll run it again. So here you'll see one more tag which says output log successful. So if you have something, if you want to print something, you can uh, uh, log it here. But another limitation with this uh, script task is that it supports only 5000 rows or 2 MB output. So make sure that you're not selecting huge amount of data. I think the similar limitation is there also for lookup. So it, it actually in, it is in line with that. Now let's try to call a store procedure. So I'll select one more here. Uh, keep it here. Now what I have done is I have already created two store procedures. Uh, one is uh, with without a parameter. Say this get names one, right? So if I give ID as a, a input, it is returning me the name. And I also have one more uh, store procedure where I have an output uh, uh, parameter. So if I execute this my output would be the row count which is one and this result this store procedure also returns a result set so this two column comes right now we will see how we can call this from a script task so we'll configure the link service as the same and we'll give this here So I'm hard coding here, but you can also pass it from here. Okay. So I'll run only this activity. So this is another thing while you are debugging. If you don't want to run everything, you can just put a breakpoint here. It is successful. Now it says result set count one, result set one. Okay, so we selected only name. Yeah, so this is how you can call a store procedure. Now let's see how you will call a store procedure where you have an out parameter. Yeah, so this is my store procedure which has an out parameter. ID is I'm passing two again and row count is out. So I'll have to add a parameter here with the same name. I'll say this again as an int value. I'm just passing it as zero and here the direction should be out because you want to get this as an out, right? And I'm also doing a print here and though it's not required. We have already seen the login. So let me remove this. Yeah, 
so this is the output and you can see the output parameter row count is one so this is how you can get your out parameter now let us see how you are going to use this result set right so what i will do is i'll get a for each here So script one is what is giving us only one record okay which is fine i'll connect this now you will see um, these two activities are showing up here and say this now within this what we'll do is we'll try to set a variable So I'm pulling out a set variable name. So we are expecting name as one column. Now the interesting part here is when you say output, right? How should we form this uh, um, expression for for each? Because here. Uh, within output you have result sets and within result set you can have multiple results right we have seen in the multiple query so what i will do is i am going to set it dot result sets zero okay so let's just double check the um name tag name so you can see now it has failed that means our syntax was incorrect so let Let's try one more thing. Um, we'll say this dot rows output dot result set dot rows. Let's try it now. Yeah, this time it is successful. Now let's see what is the name it has set is Ashok. Now I want to show the output from script one because we had two outputs. The first result set was having two column ID and name. Ashok and two. And the second one has only the name, right? Now, when we configure a for each, we gave this as zero. If I want to use a result set of second result set, I'll have to give it as one. So that's how you can actually use multiple result set, multiple output result set from this. So I hope uh, we have covered everything and this was really helpful to you. So guys, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe it, like it and comment it. If you have any questions, please share it with your colleagues. And the good news is that our channel has already crossed, crossed thousand subscribers. Thanks. Thanks a lot to everyone. Thank you.